In today's abandoned video, we explore an abandoned Borstal, a state-run male juvenile detention centre on the east coast of Northern Ireland, dating back to 1956. Having been closed for almost 20 years, the facility is suffering from total neglect, causing extensive decay and vandalism in all of its many buildings. Still, there are many interesting details to capture that remain to this day, and probably won't last too much longer. Join us as we venture within the prison to discover what's left. Remember to click subscribe and press the notification bell to never miss a video. In our last episode, we asked the question do you prefer visible camera shake whilst we move around, or would you prefer if we used a stabiliser? We had many intriguing responses, but have selected this one from Apollo, who used the word raw to describe footage that is recorded handheld. This perfectly depicts the feeling we want to invoke with our content, but possibly in the future we might fairly mix stabilised footage and shaky camera together. As our island uploads are coming to an end, this week we want to know where we should visit on our next Urbex trip. Give us some ideas below to possibly feature in our upcoming video. Near the capital of Northern Ireland, right beside the curving seaside, this dated structure is unused and overgrown. It was formerly known as Lisnavin Training School, a government-owned educational property for young offenders, and later became a youth detention centre. Beyond the tall impassable fence and through the trees, all you can see nowadays is the outlines of various buildings, all of which are abandoned. After we arrived in Ireland on our 2021 summer trip, we headed straight to the prison as the sun was setting. The old CCTV cameras that would have guarded the place. This is the main entrance. Obviously with many more CCTV cameras. Yeah, they would have definitely done a lot of metal checks in here as different vehicles entered and left. Reverse prison escape. After a short while, we managed to get by the perimeter blockage, moving towards our first complex. Quite easy access. So it's like a little workshop. The benches. This place has been trashed quite a bit, but it's quite cool. Um, just because it's a prison. Something we don't come across too often in England, especially one that's easy. And this is definitely the definition of that. Oh yeah, this proves it was a workshop. Even some machines remaining. From Halifax. The workshops indicated that the offenders were able to carry out paid labour during their sentence. It is likely that they would also have the option to work in the laundries and kitchens. This is like a huge space. Could be a gym. Really nice with the sunlight coming through. It's sad that this has been graffitied.
signs of vandalism would only be the beginning for this site. Due to the Borstal being in close proximity of a small town, it appears that locals have taken full advantage of the unwatched grounds. Earlier on, we had spoke to one who informed us that the police often check to see if any trespassers are within the structure. Some blueprints for the prison on the floor in the gym. In 1956, the facility was opened by the Northern Irish government. It was capable of holding 130 males between the ages of 10 to 17 who were sentenced to a period of borstal training. This would aim to reform offenders who would ideally be released without finishing their time due to patterns of good behaviour and change. Despite this particular prison housing more troublesome youngsters than others, parents around the area would refer to it as the bad boys home to threaten their children to attend school and bring in high grades. It became notorious in the region, unsurprisingly with the ambiguous fence visible from the road and rumours of some less than suitable events taking place inside. New area of the prison here. A lot of natural decay. I'm not too sure as to what this area would have been. Looks like a laundry room in here. Yeah, it's actually one of the old asylum light dryers or washing machines in here. This is really cool. Look at the thickness of this door. Oh, these corridors are so nice. I think they're made by the barred windows. Extremely long. It's got a pink colour scheme there, which is interesting. These ones weren't cells, but every single door has a lock on it. This is courtroom one. That's an interesting feature. Single plastic chair, but it's stuck into the ground. Let's see if the same thing is in courtroom two. Yeah. I'm not too sure why. That's there. It would make more sense if there was two chairs. And these ones would be the same, but these are consultation rooms. Medical unit. Oh wow. This is pretty cool though. There's a big piece of graffiti behind it and it's definitely been charred. It's even got the operating lamp. Except for this complete dentistry setup, there was little to see in terms of items around the majority of the prison. Anything in date or of value had been removed long ago, effectively sealing the property's fate without requirement for protection. Multilux. Still functions, but there's no bulb in there. Wide open again. This would have been the kitchens. 
um, and underneath these shutters it would lead to the canteen I'd assume. Yeah, it could be shuttered off if they wished. Quite a nice decay in here, paint chipping from the ceiling. The decay in here is amazing. Yeah, I actually love the corridors. I think the lighting we've got now has made it even better, to be honest. Yeah. This looks like the main lobby area. Yeah, you've got that control booth in the middle that would open and unlock the doors. And the central staircase as well. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, these um, banisters and metal pieces are really nice. It's almost art deco. Here we had reached the central point of the Borstal because the trio of cell wings over two storeys orientate around the control room in the middle. Really cool control board left. This one is for the alarms, so if anything went wrong, each um, space is labelled and they could trigger the alarm to alert the workers. Really nice ironwork leading into these holding cells. They even got some sort of bed frame left in there as well. It's really cool. All seem pretty similar and stripped there. There's a painting of some sort on here. You can tell it was a, a boy's prison just by having these on the wall. These dated remnants showcasing some youth sentences held in the complex were quite upsetting, especially when you research the causes for the site's closure. Strangely, this property actually has a connection with another derelict structure we visited on our trip. In May 1972, after disturbances at the Crumlin Road Jail, a riot broke out at the Lisnavin Boys Prison, with 35 residents clambering to the roof to hurl slates at staff. Subsequently, a more secure unit was added to the site to prevent this behaviour. Fights breaking out between Protestant and Catholic inmates were supposedly a frequent occurrence as well as allegations of sectarian abuse from staff upon the young children. These rumours would crop up again a couple years ago after the building came under the spotlight of the historical child abuse inquiry. Perhaps these elements were additional reasoning for why the reformation was failing and the Borstal had a re-offending rate of 89%. Inevitably the juvenile detention centre closed in 2003, with the cell building seemingly being vacant ever since. Heading upstairs now, a lot of natural light coming in through these nice windows. It's a shame they've been smashed. That's another central control booth by the look of it, looks of it. Probably means there's more holding cells up here. Yeah, same ironwork design, this time a blue corridor. This colour's amazing. First room I've seen with a uh, what appears to be a little see-through window. Having said that, it's more of a mirror on this side when you go through. You can actually see out instead. I wonder what the purpose for that would have been. There's a lot less water damage up here. All the rooms seem to be in much more dry conditions.
upstairs now. Some shredded ironwork. Again, really pretty. Oh, I can see beds in a lot of these rooms. Yeah, this is really interesting. Look at the mules as well. I've seen um, certain things around this place that indicated it was a young boy's prison, but nothing more than this. I wonder if they drew them themselves. Superheroes on. Trying to make life out of a small cramped cell. The various corridors of cells had been kept colourful with playful art deco gates as opposed to the typical bars. This was probably to present a friendly environment for the young offenders, unlike the bland prisons of today. It seems they were also allowed to decorate their room. Superman, Spider-Man and Batman. But Batman is hidden behind an unmovable door. I wonder if these windows open. Just about. It is so overgrown outside. And then when you step inside, the decay and overgrowth continues. And all these rooms have really nice peeling paint. Oh, this is pretty cool painting, probably done by one of the offenders in the long hours they were here. It's a shame that it's been left. The window also has a plastic covering over it with holes in. Assuming for a bit of ventilation and air intake, but definitely a different type of room. A lot of graffiti in here. Also a fair share of papers. Dating back to 2001. I think this is like classwork of some sort for students. They're learning about shapes there, and then there's um, word searches. And I think stuff for origami. We've got a height chart here um, for the prisoners. To check their heights, but as you can see, some explorers have been doing it as well. After spending a few hours in the dilapidated premises, and with the sun passing below the horizon soon, we left the structure, but our exploration was not finished yet. On the roadside at the front of the grounds is an impressive Italianate mansion constructed in 1863. The grand home does have relevance to the prison and a plentiful history. It was used to help injured soldiers during the Second World War and since then became a private Northern Ireland prison service museum and a guard and dog training facility. Unfortunately its ornate and promising exterior doesn't meet expectation once we had found an access point. Our hopes were quickly shattered when we took only a few steps in its dark spaces. We're inside the ridiculously grand main building, but inside it is not ridiculously grand. It's modernised, graffiti, trashed um, and renovated. As you can see, this ceiling has definitely been cleared up of its nice coves, which is sad to see, but I guess it's still a nice spacious room. It's a pity that this building isn't in use. It would make a great hotel, and it's right opposite the beach. Okay, this is kind of cool. I don't like the way it's so polished, though. This room has a bit of grandeur. Nice chandelier's still up. You can see here this space at least would have been like a museum. Water jug painted by prisoners. 
and he would have just had a bunch of items in here that prisoners worked on during the time. Heading upstairs. At least there'll be more daylight coming in here because it's less boarded. It is getting pretty dark anyway though. I like the very wide corridors. This was a classroom. One would assume for the prisoners. Very strict. The vandals had swiftly found their path inside the large manor, so if nothing is done to protect it, the building may become similar to those of the prison. For us, it was too modern for anything to intrigue the eye, therefore we headed out. This was the perfect way to start our trip across Ireland, after a long day's travel to wander into the accessible property with lots of lost features, then to find a camping location near the beach was too good to be true. We didn't know it yet, but we would be enjoying the most successful trip yet over the course of the next week. As for the Borstal, the front manor, the dog kennels and training areas were shuttered in 2016 due to budget pressures. The whole land wasn't listed for too long until being bought in July two years later for a sizeable £1.2 million. Currently nothing has been done and the 43 acre property still remains abandoned. Its dark history is still up for debate with the HIA considering these horrible and recurring claims at more than 20 institutions all over Ireland. Two weeks of public sessions occurred in 2016 with over 300 witnesses giving evidence against the juvenile centre. As far as we could find, the results have been kept private or are still under investigation. We hope you found interest in our coverage of the Borstal in Ireland. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to never miss a future release. Here are some of our photographs taken at the abandoned boys prison. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page below where we share images of our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Our next video is our most requested sequel exploration. We are heading back to Glasgow to visit more of its disused school board. See you next time.